Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Friday, July the 10th. Hashtag finally Friday. Can you believe it? We've made it through yet another week. Good to have you with us this morning. We've got your HCC news and information and a couple of special guests joining us this morning. But first, my co-host Brittany Pacheco is joining me from across town. Good morning, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd. Good morning to everyone joining us on Facebook Live. We appreciate you being here. Uh, as always, please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel. Uh, we've got thousands of videos produced by our very own HCC TV and Stafford Emmy TV. And uh, be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest videos from us. And last but certainly not least, so you can help us grow our audience. Be sure to share this podcast so we can share this vital information out to the masses. And you know, Brittany, who's here with us as well. We've got a special guest. He's going to be joining us a few times this week. Frank Cooper is in the house. Good morning, Frank. Good, good man. Three amigos are back, man. Last time, last time I was gone, I was feeling the time, man. So, you know, it's good to be back and let's get the show going. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks, Frank. We're going to be back with you and Brittany in just a little while. But first, I want to introduce our special guest uh, joining us right now, Josh Bankston. And you're the partner and solutions architect with Mace Virtual Labs, U.S. distributor of XR products. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And good morning to everybody out there watching and tuning in. Really appreciate y'all being here and excited to talk about what, we're, what we've got going on. Well, good morning. We're going to be with you in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce a very special guest. Now, you know, we always thought at HCC we have all the cool toys. We've got nothing compared to what they have over at the Southwest College. And we've got the Dean of the Information Technology, Digital and Information Technology Center of Excellence, Sean Atmishi with us. Sean, you guys got some cool stuff out there at Southwest. We got some amazing things. Thanks all for having us on here today. We are so happy to have you with us. We want to talk to you about a couple of things, and we also want to bring Josh into the conversation because he's here as a guest of yours as well. But tell us about your partnership, the COE's partnership with Mace Virtual Labs and what that means for our students. Yeah, absolutely. So about a little over a year ago, so we had decided that we were looking to acquire some XRVR equipment as the de department had continued to acquire this equipment to be able to start offering more advanced programs. And what we realized is that we needed to reach out to a distributor. And so that's where Mace Virtual Labs came in. We started talking and we found out really quick that they're in Houston. And not only that, they're willing to work and partner with us. So after a couple of meetings, we, we realized that we can do some really great stuff and really impact the community in a whole different way. And so six months later, we were able to create a, a public-private partnership with, with Mace Virtual Labs and develop a $175,000 facility here at the Westwood campus where students from all walks of life can come in and learn about XR and VR on the gaming and the artistic side. So that's where we are today. Tell me how that uh, your program there and you, you work with immersive technology and how that fits into the workforce programs. Right. So one of the challenges that we have is whenever you start looking at a lot of uh, programs that that require, you know, potential dangerous environments, as well as being very expensive to replicate, you know, XR VR is a great opportunity for us to be able to, to, to create a real life near process of that. So that's one of the great benefits of using XR VR. But secondly, the other piece is to be able to enhance remote learning. So, you know, with COVID-19 happening, one of the biggest challenges that we have is for students that are going to these workforce programs to be able to have a hands-on experience. And by having this equipment and partnering with Mace Virtual Labs has really given us the opportunity to move forward in that direction. And the third one is really being able to teach complex uh, topics uh, in, a, in a simulation which really doesn't impact messing up the equipment. And Josh, I want to bring you into the conversation. Um, let's talk about your partnership with HCC and about this new virtual reality, uh, reality center that you have and the six month project that went on. Yeah, uh, so at, at Mace Virtual Labs, we focus on helping people understand how to properly invest in XR space. XR meaning, uh, the full range of virtual reality, augmented reality. And what we really found quickly with large customers, big enterprise customers, was that they needed a workforce. They needed a skilled uh, talent pool to pull from to operate these future tech pieces of equipment. And that's where we found Sean and we started this partnership. Um, we started to build out a lab. The idea was a private-public partnership between MACE and HCC to provide equipment 
and put it in a, a facility where students had hands-on experience, right? They got to touch and feel and experience all of this cutting edge technology, sometimes before these major corporations even got to have them. So it was really important to start to understand how we could fit this technology into the educational platform and also how to understand how Sean could leverage this technology best for his students so that Houston at large could benefit from it as well. Now, the students who go through this program and learn on the technology you have there, would they be able to go out in several industries and maybe be brought on to build these type of labs for, say, oil and gas companies or cybersecurity or, or even uh, schools or other colleges? Would they be able to take their knowledge and their skill sets to be able to go out and do that? Absolutely. So Mark Zuckerberg, um, head of Facebook and also uh, owner of Oculus, which is one of the major VR players in the market, um, says that VR is the next computing unit. So really thinking less as a peripheral, but more of a access and an evolution of technology. So it's not just how to put a headset on for a specific industry. It's that this, in, this technology will touch every walk of life and every industry out there. So the more hands-on experience you have, the more you can develop for it, the more you can use it, the more you can be competent with it, just like being competent with your computer at home so that you can jump on a Zoom call, you will be that much better at, in the workforce. Sean, um, when we when things changed drastically for all of us uh, in the middle of March, when we went away for spring break and really never returned in uh, full force to our campuses, <laughs> was this technology and the and the skills that you've been installing with this lab was it able to help you in moving fall, forward and working in this virtual world that we live in now? So yes, it actually has been. So for the for, since we've actually gone since I think spring break is when we went on online. Uh, we started with the engaged platform that Josh was able to hook us up with and being able to take our normal physical WebEx meetings and make them completely virtualized. So we've been doing that. It's a, it's a culture change. It's a shift in how we normally operate. And I'd like to mention that this is a, this is, this is a, we're doing this in multiple phases. And um, what I also wanted to mention is the work that we're doing with the COEs and impacting their work with their workforce programs, because what's happening right now is we have a lot of students that need to take hands-on hands -on work with inside their, their degree plans and certificates, and they're not able to complete that because of COVID-19. And what we're doing now is we're working very closely with Josh's group and their technology partners to be able to develop customized content. Now, this is the point that I want to make is we're not using off-the-shelf content. ATC is working on delivering customized content with our own faculty from various COEs, and that's unique in itself. And so the pilot programs that we're doing is, is with public safety, automotive, as well as manufacturing. So I wanted to bring that up as well. Well, that, that's groundbreaking right there because the big problem a lot of our students are having right now, especially in those programs, are how do I complete my labs? And from what you're telling me, we're able to work with our partnership to, uh, to create custom technology, custom programs that these students can complete their labs. That's huge. Correct. And just to add to that, so Josh has been here the entire process. And the first, the first step that we did is we were able to introduce our instructional designers all across district wide on how to, how to use the Engage platform and how that we can start manipulating with these different objects and so forth. That's a learning curve in itself. The second phase has been is working with the COEs, the deans, the chairs, and the faculty that are part of those programs to be able to start visualizing and thinking about what they really want to do in their programs. Because not every course needs to be virtualized in this case, but it could be a chapter, it could be a module, or it could be the entire course. And that's why we wanna make sure that our instructional designers are in place with the faculty in there. And we have all that, that, that those pieces together with Mace Virtual Labs. What's been the reaction from the other centers of excellence uh, when, we've, when you've approached them and, and working with them? Have they been uh, uh, ecstatic to work to get this type of uh, program that they can deliver to their students? Look, I'll be very honest with you. Everybody's extremely excited to be working on this project because look, we're, we're offering something that a lot of other institutions are not able to, number one. And number two, it's really giving the faculty an opportunity to rethink and revision how they're teaching, you know, in, the, in this environment. And by the way, I really think that what we're doing is really impacting higher education in general. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where this program, these programs go and how this is going to be adopted across not only Houston Community College, 
but all the other colleges in the nation as well. You know, just to give people an idea, just a, a basic idea of what you guys have been doing, I shared, uh, and I know some of us shared in social media, some of these virtual meetings you were having, and it looked like you were meeting in the West Loop Auditorium. It was set up that way, and it looked just like the West Loop Auditorium. Talk about that itself. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the technology is really interesting. We're using a various uh, 360 cameras. We're able to go in and capture that, and, I, and Josh is really a subject matter expert in this area. But in terms of photogrammetry, where you're able to pick up all the different aspects of the physical room, and then from there, they're able to create a, a total VR immersed platform. And so you can simulate any room, any facility that you want, and that's the vision. You know, currently right now, we're working with, with the, uh, the advanced manufacturing group, and that's been one of the biggest challenges, is being able to not only offer VR content, but have it authentic to HCC. Just imagine putting on the headset, going into the room, and you see Houston Community College. It's just like you're right there. And that's the, that's where we're trying to get, it, get, get out. Josh, this has to be something that, um, I mean, it's groundbreaking because it sounds like you guys are doing stuff that hasn't been done in other colleges before. and But other colleges are probably going to be taking notice of what we're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is being at the forefront, right? This is bleeding edge technology meets um, very innovative education and great minds like the people here joining us today, all working together in concert to be as agile and as solution oriented as possible mm -hmm. for the student base out there. We're all struggling through this pandemic and we're all pulling together as every string as, as we can find and picking it up, tying it together and making as solid as not as we can in order to provide the solutions that the students need. Okay, so a couple of cool toys I want to throw out there because this will this the audience will love these. A Tesla suit and the <laughs> VR headsets that monitor your eye movement. Talk about those two things, you guys. Yeah. So I, I don't know if anyone out there has seen the movie Ready Player One, but it's it's basically we Sean has access to um, all those toys and, and gadgets that happen to be used in Ready Player One. Actually, when he takes the boot suit off of the, the rack in the movie, he's actually picking up a Tesla suit box. So Tesla suit, what it does is it's a full body haptic solution. So think about a wetsuit that and you're, if you're in a digital experience such as virtual reality, and something impacts you or you get sprayed by water, you're going to feel that uh, impact across your skin. It's also going to track your, bo your, your body movements as well as some uh, level of uh, uh, health data like your heart rate and things like that. So the idea is we're bringing the entire body and the entire scope of how you interact and how you interface with the digital environment entirely immersing you in it so that you're not thinking about it being a game or some kind of video experience or some kind of uh, spreadsheet you're working on, you're actually living it there. And another thing that's important I wanna bring up about the Engage platform is that it's not just a way for us to connect to each other and be present, but um, you're able to learn at your own pace. So a, an educator can record their educational uh, speech or presentation and you and your teammates or you by yourself can redo and revisit that educational uh, lecture at your own pace as many times as you want to make sure that you understand the content that you're consuming. Sean, have you been able to take the Tesla suit and hook it up to games at home yet? The answer is no. <laughs> but here, I, I know I really want to. So let me be honest with you. Let me be very honest with you. Okay, so this technology is so hot and so new for us. We've been trying to wrap our heads around this. We were very fortunate that Mace Virtual Labs invited one of our, our staff members to actually go to Minsk with him, with Josh, and we'll share the pictures with you all, to be able to get trained wow. to use the Tesla suit. He came back with a wealth of information, and here's what's going on. We're building out not only a credit portion, but also a continuing education uh, a series of courses for this, okay? And that's coming. That is, that is on the way, I promise y'all. But we got hit with COVID-19, which really changed that up, but we're really looking forward to getting this out where not only you'll be able to learn how to use the equipment itself, but also public safety. Think about the firefighters. Think oh, about yeah. the police units, you know, being able to deal with ballistic, you know, testing, whatever it, you can imagine. And not to mention the amount of stress that you can analyze from the, in, from the individual. I think it's just incredible. And I also want to mention some of the other products like Infinidec, which is a full 360 motion capturing treadmill. I mean, it's incredible. 
And we were about to install this at the Western campus before COVID-19 happened. And think about rehabilitation, think about the healthcare piece of that as well. So there's so many pieces going on with this. And so I just want to mention that what we're doing is impacting all of our COEs. In yeah. January, and just to add one other piece, we're really fortunate in January, we, I asked Dr. Webster if it would be possible we can get all the COE deans to come out, and they did. And it was incredible because Josh had an opportunity to work with the entire district COEs and their deans and really envision what they could be doing with these different programs. Maybe Josh wants to talk a little more about that as well. Yeah, so I, I want to take it back to what Todd said at the beginning of this program about introducing Sean and having all the fun toys, right? Most people, when they think about virtual reality, if they're aware about virtual reality, um, think about like the Samsung Gear VR or maybe the Google Cardboard, yeah. some really early dated uh, experiences that are interesting, but not exactly taking the technology to where it's meant to be. So what Sean has, the, the Vario headset with the human eye resolution and eye tracking to know where you're looking, the Tesla suit, the Manus haptic gloves, the Omni treadmill and the Infinidec, all of these things are taking the technology to the nth degree and really trying to understand where we can take it. So it's not just us, it's not just the people that live, eat, sleep and breathe the technology, but it's the students out there that are going to have that next best idea that is going to either improve the product, to introduce a new experience in a whole new way that we haven't even imagined yet. And that's what is so critical about what Sean is uh, achieving here is bringing that to the community college level to such a big institution like HCC is groundbreaking. You guys are doing some incredible stuff, Sean and Josh. And I know uh, we're, we're trying to get Sean on to do a show for us in the next couple of weeks. So folks, if you wanna learn more about this and all the cool things they're doing um, in his center of excellence, uh, tune into the show. We'll have more on that in the future. Sean, thanks for being here. Real quickly, where can people go on our website to find you guys? Really easy, hccs.edu slash digital. All right. And Josh, we appreciate your partnership and I appreciate you joining us today. Yes, we, we love our partnership with HCC and, and we look forward to the exciting things to come. Thanks guys, we'll see you guys very soon again. We appreciate you being here. Thanks Todd. Take care. All right, we're gonna move across town to uh, Brittany and Frank. Frank Cooper making the return to the show for Fridays. We're gonna be seeing more of Frank in the future as we move forward. But thanks for being here, Frank. I know you guys have some announcements to go over. They're doing some cool stuff at that center of excellence out there, aren't they? Yeah, they definitely are. I mean, I I was a student at the Southwest campus, you know, many, many years ago. But I mean, the that program there was not as elaborate as it is today. So it's really cool to see just how much uh, digital information technology has has evolved. It's, it's really, really neat. And I just thought you had to ask him if he's ever hooked up the suit to a game. You know, Sean, you know, I, I just figured you had to ask him that, but I'm, I'm sure maybe he'll do it in the future. That would be cool. Frank, would you wear the Tesla suit and play a game in it? I don't know about the suits. I will be a proud supporter and spokesman for Tesla. Uh, or Tesla. Well, well you'll, you'll take the vehicle, not the suit. Okay. All right. We got it. <laughs> no, so, but you know, guys, there's some uh, events going on right now, but first we want to make an important announcement because COVID testing is extremely important throughout Harris County and the city of Houston. And HCC has a number of sites that are open now and opening up, uh, I believe, the next week. You guys want to go over that, Brittany? Yeah, sure. So the first uh, location that has reopened is at our HCC Southeast uh, college location, which is our East Side campus located at 6815 Rustic. This is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. No appointment is required. Now, we also have some other sites that are back up and running, but those locations do require an appointment. Frank? Yes, yeah, so HCC Northeast Campus, 555 Community College Drive, Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then we have HCC South Campus, 1990 Airport Boulevard, Monday through Saturday, same time, 8 to 4 p.m. So if you're in the location, you can call 512-883-2400. 
We also have an international students virtual town hall. Of course, uh, the international subject of uh, international students and the status of F1 visas and the new announcement that was made this week by by ICE have a lot of people wondering where what's going on. Well, we've got a uh, virtual town hall which will take place next week. It's going to be the Office of International Student Services. Uh, they'll be talking with students who are faced with unique visa status, and here they'll be there to assist with updates and answers with this virtual town town hall that is Wednesday July 15th from noon to 1 p.m. and Brittany do you have the information on where to find that so for uh, to reserve a space for this virtual town hall you need to RSVP by emailing the office uh, the international office and you can email them at OISS dot international at HCCS dot edu don't worry you don't have to you know you know, replay this. We're going to have all that information here on this podcast in our description box, but we also have a flyer that we're going to post later today on our social media pages. Frank, have you ever had a virtual sub? Um, I, had a, I had a substitute teacher uh, do, uh, do a virtual training. That's the only sub I've had. Um, but I know what you're going with this. MBDA <laughs> sandwiches with Austin Commercial is on the way, sub and su sub and sandwiches, folks at HCC Minority Business Development Association are still getting entrepreneurs together. Uh, BYOS, bring your own subs. Check out the WebEx forum next Wednesday, July 15th, from 11.30 to 1 p.m. That's right. And uh, one thing we want to get Frank involved with, our Rec Sports Gamer Tournament. Do you play Madden 20, Frank? You know what, well, since the pandemic happened, I haven't played video games for 10 years. And I bought a PS4. Now I'm a Madden professional now. So I'm, I'm, I might come. I might join Madden. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, Brittany, we yeah. got a we got a gamer here. We've been trying to draft Justin to do these things, and it just hasn't worked out for us. So uh, that's uh, happening Tuesday through Saturday next week, July 14th through 18th. Your deadline to register is today, Friday, July 10th, Frank. So we need you to register for that, representing HCC. TV and I think Brittany, there's a email address they can uh, email to to get registered. Really simple email: sports at hccs.edu. You do need to put in the subject line Madden 20 tournament if you want to register. Yes, today is the last day to register for next week's event. So sports at hccs.edu. Subject line Madden 20 tournament. And Frank, I think we've got some boot camps coming up. Have you ever done Zoom on Zumba? We've been trying to promote that all week long. I'm trying to hashtag it, get some T-shirts made up. That's just my idea. But uh, uh, these are just boot camps we have going on virtually. Yeah, I haven't done Zumba yet, man. I'm, I'm not confident enough to get my Zumba game out in public like that for everybody. But um, boot camps only from noon to 1240, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then also for current HC students, for the HC Students, currently, staff, and faculty only must have an HCC email. Uh, rest of the day, Christian, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N -S -S dot Andrews at H-C-C-S dot E-D-U. And subject line should be virtual fitness summer 2020. They're interested in that. So, uh, Frank, go once again, tell us what type of game system did you buy and, and tell us what games you bought. So, like, I... I was like back in my college days. I was a I was a Madden head. So like Madden 04, 05, 06, I was I was king. And then you know like, you grow up and start working and doing all these types of things. So I didn't really play video games. And when the pandemic happened, I'm like, I got I got bored at home. I'm like you know what? I'm going to go and buy me a PS4. And I bought I bought Madden 20. And I don't know, man. I don't think HC students want to see me. Uh, I might I might I might I might clean up. I might clean up. So I might. I might buy out respectfully, just so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see nobody shine. Getting a little confident there, huh, Brittany? Hey, you know, Frank was a football player. I mean, I've, I've got confidence in the guy. I mean, yeah. I'm all yeah, for I it. I think, it. I think he should play. I, I really do. I think you should play the game, Madden 20. I used to play years ago. I, I was a gamer back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, I enjoyed I uh, enjoyed playing a lot more computer games. I was into more computer games. So I played those a lot. But I used to like to just 
uh, I'll date myself. I used to like to go when you remember when the Oilers played, I used to play some of the games that the Oilers were in it so that they could actually beat the other teams. You know, they'd always lose in the playoffs. Well, that would inspire me to go play the teams again on, you know, as a gamer. And I used to do that. And uh, I did that uh, with college football too, when I'd want to replay the games because I didn't think they went the way I wanted them to go. So that was my experience with games, but I got out of that. I grew up too one of these days, but that was about probably about the same time Frank grew up. I grew up. I was just a little bit later than him. <laughs> Todd the gamer would have never guessed that. Yeah, it was it was a while back, a while back. So, um, right. you guys got big plans for the weekend, or are going to kind of keep it low? Uh, you know, Houston is, uh, we are still seeing a bit of a, an outbreak in Houston and they are asking people to stay home and stay safe. So uh, we must remind our audience, if you do get out there and, and get out about, make sure you keep your social distancing and wear your mask, you know, do your part and uh, trying to keep all of us safe. But, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've been noticing, you know, sadly, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but we all have our go-to takeout. I'm noticing a few of the places that I've been going to over the years, unfortunately now are having to close down, you know, at least temporarily, some employees may test positive for COVID or they just close down altogether because they can't survive this pandemic. Well, you know, Todd, uh, the governor had to resend his 75% capacity for restaurants to reopen back down to 50. So, yeah. um, you know, that has a lot to do with it because obviously a lot of these businesses uh, obviously need their patrons to come in and and purchase their food or, you know, services, what have you. Um, yeah, it, it's unfortunate to see what's happening with our local businesses. However, I, I will maintain that the health and safety of everyone is going to be more predominant than ever uh, to ensure that we can flatten out this curve that is the spike in, in COVID here in Houston. So uh, like Todd said, make, make sure you uh, wash your hands, wear your mask, maintain social distancing. Don't venture out unless you absolutely need to. I know it's hard to sit in your home all day, um, but take a walk, you know, just practice all the those safety measures that we've been told to. I don't know about you guys. Do y'all find yourself when I, I've noticed it more over the past couple of weeks, when I'm standing in line at a store, I automatically look at the ground for the X's or the little lines that tell you where you're supposed to stand. Same here. Okay. The kid in me wants to like leapfrog from one, from one side to the other. Um, I used to do that as, as a kid, like, like hopscotch and stuff. So when I see that, it reminds me of my childhood. But I just want to give a quick shout out, man, to all the medical professionals, nurses, the doctors, man. Y'all just proved that all heroes don't wear capes, man. So, so thank y'all for putting your lives on the line and, and serving the community. Yeah, we had, uh, I believe it was on Monday, we had Dr. Jimmy Adams on with a poem uh, for all the medical professionals out there because, you know, they they really are, um, you know, they're they're understaffed right now from what I'm hearing in many cases. And because uh, many of them are sick, many of them gotten sick or they're having to quarantine. So a lot of them that are working now are, are working, you know, uh, ungodly schedules, you know, uh, extra long hours. So we do surely appreciate them. You know, guys, I guess it's about time to wrap up the show for today on Monday. We've got Nithi from uh, the Director of International Student Services. He'll be joining us to answer some questions, you know, because, Brittany, I know you're still getting those questions in social media, and, Frank, you're getting them, too, about um, from our international students wondering, what's my status going to be? That's correct, Todd. I mean, it's there's a lot of unknown at this time uh, with regards to the new uh, rule change that ICE has uh distributed. So HCC is definitely reviewing the policies and making sure that what we have to offer for our safe learning options for the fall are going to comply with that new rule change. Uh, but once again, for our international students, be sure to take part in that town hall, uh, virtual town hall discussion that we're going to have next Wednesday, July 15th uh, to RSVP please email the international office at oiss.international at hccs.edu because obviously you need to know what's what's happening. Um, and this is also open to hosts uh, for our international students as well. And the director of international student services will be on our show Monday morning. So if you have a question, you can uh, type it in the comments below and uh, we will get to that question during the broadcast. Hey, Frank, it was good having you here again. It's good to be here, man. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. 
Well. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you more in the future uh, starting next week. Brittany, have a good, both of y'all have a good weekend. Enjoy the days off. And uh, we enjoyed having you with us today. We enjoy uh, being with you every morning, live at 10 a.m. And we'll see you Monday morning for Up to the Minute.